Welcome to the video. If you're eager to understand the main algorithm behind Abacus Dynamic Explicit and want to know which types of problems it's perfect for, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear grasp of how the algorithm of this method works, and we'll walk through a simple example to make it all come to life. First, let's dive into a simple example, compressing a bar using the explicit method. We're working with four nodes and three elements. In explicit methods, the mass of each element is concentrated at the nodes, which simplifies things because it turns the mass matrix into a diagonal matrix. Imagine the mass sitting on each node, and between these masses, we have springs representing the stiffness of the elements. Here's the cool part, by using the mass at each node and the forces applied to it, we calculate acceleration. Then, from acceleration, we figure out velocity and displacement at each node. At the start of the first increment, none of the springs are compressed, so there are no internal forces, just the external force, P, acting on the first node. We calculate the accelerations then integrate to get velocities and again to get displacements. From these displacements, we find the strain in each element and from the strain, we calculate stress. At the end of the first increment, we can compute the internal forces and use them for the next step. Notice that after the first increment, only the first element is affected, while elements 2 and 3 haven't changed yet. We can continue in the same way for the second increment. With each increment, more elements get involved, and we see the stress wave propagate through the structure. This is why the explicit method is ideal for high-speed problems like impacts or explosions. But what about complex problems? Imagine you have a problem with n degrees of freedom. The equilibrium equation relates the external forces, P, internal forces, I, and nodal accelerations, U double prime. Since the mass matrix is diagonal, solving this for accelerations is computationally efficient compared to implicit methods, which require inverting the stiffness matrix. After finding the accelerations, we use a central difference method to integrate velocities and displacements, improving accuracy by considering values at the midpoint of increments. Let's take a closer look at how accuracy improves in the explicit method through the central difference scheme. Consider an increment, i, at time t. We calculate accelerations at time t based on the external and internal forces. Now, if we've already calculated the velocity at the midpoint of the previous increment, we can use the current acceleration to update the velocity at the midpoint of the current increment. This method improves accuracy by effectively using the midpoint velocity slope or acceleration between two points. Once we have the updated velocity, we can then calculate the displacement at the end of the increment. Again, accuracy is enhanced because we're using the velocity, or slope, in the middle of the span. Now, let's break down the entire explicit solver algorithm. Each step in the simulation is divided into hundreds or even thousands of tiny increments, 
all with low computational costs. Using the internal and external forces from the previous increment, we calculate nodal accelerations. This step is computationally cheap, thanks to the diagonal mass matrix. Then, using central difference integration, we update velocities and displacements. With the new displacements, we calculate strains and stresses, which let us assemble the internal force vector. After writing the results, we check if we've completed the step or if more increments are needed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. Also, be sure to visit our website for more related products and resources. Thanks for watching, and have a great day!